ADCB presents Top Guns in association with Audi. Hello and welcome. Shunted out of Kuwait during the Gulf War, this man came to Dubai to start a business. He had loads of ideas, immense passion, but very little money. How do you start a business with very little capital and make it a billion dirham company in less than 20 years? Let's find out from today's Top Gun, Rizwan Sajjan. When I was an eight-year-old child, he used to sell kites on the street. I still remember one fine day, the municipality people came and took away all the things. And I, as a child, was crying. I said, why are you taking my brother's things away? Then I realized that this is a penalty where you have to pay in India. Then secondly, he did the job of distributing milk. He also distributed newspapers. He also started a small factory of files. So the business was always in his mind, and he never made me feel that, you know, I am without a father. I still remember he used to put up a stall of crackers and he would sell. He never had that feeling that I am selling what I I used to shy off. What are you doing, You know, I used to shy off with my friends. I was very scared, but now I feel, oh my God, this man, what he was, and now where he has reached. If we want a lesson on dignity of labor, there is no better person to learn from very approachable, amiable, and completely unassuming is Rizwan Sajan. Rizwan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome to my house, Ansh. Uh, thank you for the lovely hospitality. It's lovely to be here. Most welcome. So let's start with your growing up days. Tell us where you were born, where you were brought up, where did you spend most of your childhood? Uh, I was born and brought up uh, in India, uh, in a place called Bombay. In Bombay, we were staying in Ghatkopa, so that's where I was born. Um, we born in a middle class family. My father used to work uh, in a company called Nathani Steel. I used to go to Fatima High School. From there, I started uh, going to a college called Somaya College. So I would say my young days were all in Ghatkopa. Um, and then later on, uh, I went to Kuwait. So you worked there for a couple of years in Mumbai before going to Kuwait? Huh? Yes, I did, I did work in a couple of years in Nathani only. It so happened that uh, my father expired when I was only 16 years old. Oh, okay. Uh, so at that time, I was the only breadwinner for the house. Um, and he did not leave any money with us because he was also a working class person over there. So I had to make sure that uh, there's enough. Uh, I had to earn the bread for the myself and for the whole family. So I used to leave my house, I remember, at 7 o'clock to go to the college. By 10.30, 10, uh, I was going back to Nathani because I told my college that this is a problem I have where I have to balance the house and the college. So they allowed me the permission that I could only attend half the classes. Mm -hmm. And then it was after 5.30, it was some business which I was doing. So by the time I could reach home, it was 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the night. How many members were you supporting of the family that time? Uh, it, in my family, it was me, my sister Shabnam, my brother Anis, and my mother. So we are four of us total. Uh, it's a question of how I am managing. There was no choice. I had to work from 7 o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock in the night. Uh, when you're left with no choice, uh, it's, you have to either make it or you don't do it. Then I wrote to my uncle in Kuwait when I was 16 that I want to come to Kuwait in case you're able to give me a job. He said, but I can't give you a job now and I can only give you when you're 18. Now, I thought that he is trying to avoid me because uh, by diplomatically saying no that he can't give me a job, so saying that I'm young enough. And I forgot about it. I started living my life in Bombay and working in Nathani and doing some business, trying to somehow balance my life. Uh, but uh, you'll be surprised, on my 18th birthday, I received a letter from my uncle, mm. which I can never forget in my life, what he has done for me. On my 18th birthday, when I received this letter from him, saying that, better you approached me for a job when you were 16. At that time, I could not offer you a job. Today, you are 18. And in case if you are still interested to come to Kuwait, I can give you a job. Lovely. I was so touched, and she can imagine. Yeah. Because in India, in Bombay, when you have nothing, it's, it's not easy to make your career. It's not easy to make your living. And when this opportunity came, it, I was on the top of the world. I said, I have to take this opportunity. I immediately wrote to him, I'm coming over there. And uh, you must have been so happy to get a job off from Kuwait. Because, you know, my father was not there. And yeah. 
uh, I didn't know which direction to move around. Uh, there was nobody to uh, take care of uh, the family. Uh, but uh, that was the silver thing which I saw. I went to Kuwait yeah. and uh, he offered me a job in Kuwait. Uh, which was 150 dinars. I remember still the salary which I started with. 150 dinars was approximately 1,800 dirhams of Kuwait, uh, of Dubai, if you look at it today. Um, I started working with him um, as a s simple counter salesman. It was not the money which he, the job he gave me. The most important thing was when he brought me to Kuwait, he is the one who taught me how to make 2 plus 2, 5. Mm -hmm. And that was that is what today I am always uh, obliged to him, that... Uh, this is the person who gave me the right guideline. So for how many years you worked with your uncle then? It was last when I left him, I was the right hand for the company. Like after him, I was managing the whole business for him. And probably I would have never, never left him. Uh, I worked with him for eight years. If Saddam Hussein would have not come into the picture, I remember exactly in August uh, 2, 1990, uh, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait and uh, we were in a big mess. Frankly, it was a very, very difficult period for us at that time because all the supermarkets are closed and nothing to do, no job, whole day in the house, we don't know what to do. But uh, again, uh, we made the most out of it. Some of our friends who were in the same compound, we decided we're going to do some something unique thing over there. What we did was uh, we went to the Indian embassy, we put a stall over there and we, we started taking telegrams from all the people and that Every every uh, telegram was 5 to 10 dinars people had to pay. What we used to do is we used to collect this uh, 100, 200, 150 telegrams and drive ourselves to Basra. Oh. Now, this was a very risky thing. Very risky. Very risky Basra thing. was right. a war zone. Of, you know, driving ourselves to Basra. This was an idiotic thing which we were doing over there. And uh, we did a wonderful job. Almost for 15 days, we were collecting 150, 200 uh, telegrams. The second day, we used to go to Basra, send all the telegrams, come back. And we used to feel happy, oh, we made 200 dinars, yeah. 300 dinars every day. And then we decided, okay, now there's nothing we can do over here. So let's go back to India. Uh, it was like, you know, went to Kuwait, did very well. Yeah. Life was going very cool. But then again, come back to Bombay, no money in pocket, nothing to do. Then uh, what happened was we decided I need to go back again to some other Middle East country because living a life in Bombay after staying in Kuwait for eight years, is not going to be easy. Uh, one of my friends was there in Dubai, so we approached him and with his virtue, we came over here in Dubai. And uh, at that time, I was offered a job of 3,000 dirhams per month. I said yes to that. Two months, my visa doesn't come. I called my friend again. Why? What's the problem? Where is my visa? He says, Rizwan, I'm so sorry. I committed to you 3,000 dirhams. I can't pay you. Because at that time, oh. Dubai was in a bad shape. Because after the invasion, everything was so much down that even my friend was not even willing to take the, uh, take the risk of paying me 3,000 dirhams. So I asked him a simple question, how much can you pay me? So he said, I'll pay you 1,500 dirhams. I worked with him for more than a year, understanding Dubai, how it is. Uh, he was into hardware business, I was into wood business. So we thought that we'll do the business together, but somehow it didn't work out. So then we, I had to tell him that was I want to start this wood business of mine so we better we part and I started my wood business. It was after a year of working with him. That's correct. Rizwan Sargent's Danube story continues right after the break. Don't go away. I need to move forward and then how to move forward? I don't have the money to move forward, import the goods and sell. But what I had was the connection, the credibility in the market. So we started with our journey in Sharjah. The most important factor which requires for you to be in the business or making your first million is the luck factor.